Bismillah and Nur al Anwar, in the name of God, the light of lights. Since the late 1970s, and especially beginning with Dimitri Gutas, Ibn Abu Sufyan, who plays the part of the archetypal Muawiyah in the plot of this modern counter dramaturgy, the Anglophone Western Ivory Tower has engaged in a systematic and protracted intellectual as well as personal smear campaign against the scholarship, writings, and ideas of the great French urinologist and Islamologist Henri Corbin. This smear and intellectual defamation campaign has now become entrenched within the Anglophone ivory tower, and to some extent among some figures of the German ac academic establishment as well, who merely ape whatever the Anglos are doing who have in recent years sought to normalize their sophomoric views of Corban beyond the corporate-driven neoliberal Western Academy and into the mainstream. Arguably literary clown Michael Mohammed Knight's ignorant lumping of Henry Corban with the neo-traditionalists is one of his mediocre, in one of his mediocre novels, is part of the function of normalizing this Corban hatred by the Anglophone ivory tower that probably used MMK as a mouthpiece in order to communicate such enmity to larger and basically impressionable audiences beyond the conceited, self-styled academic specialists of the Anglo-American Academy itself. That aside, according to Corban's late wife, Stella Corban, who communicated this tidbit to myself in the presence of others during 2000 in Paris, the works, ideas, writings, and even the person of Corban himself were already the target of such a duplicitous, politically motivated smear campaign in Iran during the early and mid-1970s by those highly placed and well-connected Pahlavi-era hacks envious of him, who had the ear of the royal court. And simply because Henry Corban did not pull rank or adhere to the neo-traditionalist dogma and found the neo-traditionalist school to be composed of mainly obnoxious obscurantists with dangerously reactionary political leanings communicating their obnoxious obscurantism and reactionary politics via esotericism. According to Corban's wife, it was due to this entanglement, albeit other considerations likewise animated it, whereby Corban once made the famous statement that, quote-unquote, the church is Ahriman. Seeing how, in the name of some nebulous orthodoxy, some figures of this neo-traditionalist camp have been bent on re-establishing the authoritarian power of the Roman Catholic and now Eastern Orthodox theocracy. While Henry Corbin located any veridical spiritual ecclesia beyond necessarily established human institutions, be they contemporary or historical, nor did overtly racist pseudo-intellectual gobbledygook of the sort enunciated by Frithjof Schuon in his book Castes and Races appeal to the temperament of Corban. In short, true spiritual elites in Corban's Weltanschauung are not spawned by biology, but by individual effort in the spatio-temporal world and grace from above. A bounty open to the entirety of the human subject regardless of the circumstances and accidents of birth and bio biological genealogy, as explicitly art articulated in the first verse uh, of the fourth surah of the Qur'an, especially given that Henry Corban was in fact a Shia Muslim who had made his shahada in the late 1940s in Iran and in the presence of the Kermani sheikhis. On top of this, the fact that René Guénon had completely misrepresented and dissed Corbin's book, Sohrabardi de Alep, Fondateur, La Doctrine Illuminative, published Paris 1939, in a review which can now be found in Insights into Islamic Esotericism and Taoism, page 74, exposed Guénon himself as having limited intellectual horizons of the full historical spectrum of the Islamic philosophical project especially in the Eastern Islamic lands, as well as highlighting limitations in Gainon's own technical grasp of Arabic, which others have likewise highlighted about Gainon elsewhere more recently. To return to the misdeeds of the Anglophone Academy against Corban, 
The tediousness of this establishment anti-Korban campaign was notably demonstrated in John Walbridge's 2011 article, The Devotional and Occult Works of Sohoardi, the Illuminationist, which is published in Ishraq, number 2, 2011, pages 80 to 97. See my review. A review where not a single mention was made of Henry Corbin's scholarship on the very topic Walbridge was pontificating on in the piece. The more recent examples of such intellectual skullduggery by others can be multiplied, such that silence by the Anglophone Academy around Corbin and his scholarship can be contextualized as a form of othering in order to eventually erase all memory of him as a scholar and a philosopher, not to mention his works. In that respect, we find it quaint that in that specific article a former Baha'i, such as John Walbridge, the veritable archetypal Yazid ibn al-Mu'awiyah of this story, would behave towards Henry Corbin by way of intellectual silence and ostracism in an identical fashion as how his former Baha'i co-religionists are encouraged to behave towards what they call covenant breakers, which in itself highlights the fact that Walbridge's approach, despite pretensions to the contrary, is far from being dispassionate, objective, scholarly, or remotely unbiased. Be that as it may, and given all of this, it is not a stretch of the imagination to compare this Anglophone spearheaded Korban hatred to the Umayyad's policy of institutionalized hatred and exoriation of the first Imam Ali alayhi salam. Echoing thereby the words of the famous Hadith, quote, We have not recognized the hypocrites, al munafiqun towards the covenant of the Messenger of God, blessings be upon him and peace, except by their hatred against Ali, unquote. My translation. While certain Orthodox Muslim believers may be scandalized by such a comparison, the fact is that within the universe of Shia esotericism, the true realized believer, i.e. the Gnostic initiate and so partisan of the Imam, is united with the Imam in a union mystica as the manifestation of the unified and contiguous legion of the hiero intelligent slash nexo consciousness or aql, such that hatred of the true ex expositor of the Imam's arcana, which Henry Corban clearly was, is in essence hatred of the Imam himself, and so in itself constitutes nasp, hatred of the Prophet's family, and so infidelity to the covenant of Alast. In the Fatimiyya Sufi order, we consider Henry Corban to be a holy figure and a gate of knowledge to the divine gnosis. We commemorate the date of his birth and death as holy days, and we enthusiastically recommend all of his books, writings, and articles as a solid orientation to our own post-Islamic Bayani doctrine. To us, Henry Corban was quite literally Sohrawardi revisited, and so we refer to him as the Sheikh al or the master of illumination.